TCE. Oh, you see all the yarns? What's in there? <laughs> Hi friends, welcome to Wild Cottage. I uh, cut the urge to go through all my yarn stash. So this is my yarn stash. I have two shelves of yarn and then down here are woolen projects that I've, I've made. And just to bring it all out, kind of organize it a bit, uh, go through it. And I'll put a little video in here of it all spread out on the bed. So it nearly filled the bed. The bed's a double bed. It's not a king size bed. So it wasn't quite that much yarn, which would be overwhelming. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is my yarn stash. I, for some reason, it's been bothering me for a while. I wanted to get it organized. So I took it out of the Ikea cabinet. If you're interested in, I use that for a yarn storage and I have a review up on the channel. And I've taken it all out because I want to organize it. And as you can see, here comes Sheppy. Mimi is down there. Anyways, it's like an explosion of color. Makes me so happy. Yes. <laughs> so some of these have projects. Some of these are in groups. And some of these, like over here, mainly are just like not really sure what I'm going to do. Mostly I buy with projects in mind. Although, like this little group of single skeins, I didn't do that. I just bought them because they're pretty. And I was going to make some socks and then I thought, oh my goodness. Like this one. I thought it was just too amazing for socks when I started knitting it up. So I think I'll make a cow. Anyways, I'm ahead of myself. And actually looking at this, the vast majority of it is Irish dyers or Irish mill spun, which is kind of nice. Um, so I have this beautiful mini set. I think it's called Planetary Sisters Sunrise to Sunset by Eve Chambers. And she dies out in Cork. So that will be, um, you know, a shawl or maybe like a short sleeve tee. I have to go through and check. First, actually, let's just start with the things I know there are projects for. Now, the colors are looking a tad bit more sort of saturated than they are in real life. Not completely a huge amount, but still a tad more saturated. So you know, if you watched the last video, the fine leaf fiber set that I got here. And I went to, um, there really aren't like big, there, as far as I know, anywhere here in the West Coast, there's no big chain sort of craft or yarn shops. And there are hardly any little yarn shops, but there is one called um, Knit Wits and something up in Galway. So we went up there because I wanted to match that blue that a, a viewer was saying, oh, that, that would be a great thing to match. And I want to do the Curvette Shawl, which is a Stephen West pattern. Well, that's for the September. This is a lovely um, pair by Gideon Yarns. I'm wondering, can I get the V-back tee? out of it which I would wear the V to the front the weight of this it's nearly the same although the, you can see the yarn is a bit wavier because it's a um, silk mohair but I'm thinking when it's knit up it might be okay especially if this is on like if this is the top half I don't know anyway and this is a sock set so these all I think have projects this is so beautiful from, from Wild Atlantic Yarns and I was going to knit up a huge slanket shawl but now I'm thinking I'd like to do something else with it as well I was thinking I'd like to make a slanket out of those three it'll still be pretty big and a ranunculus out of this because I really love this and I have a little red tank top and a little red yellow tank top to wear underneath so that has a project this wow really blown out it's a juniper moon and so I got it that little yarn shop after I got my tooth pulled this is going to be, I think, for the Sherbet Fizz Shawl by Amber O'Brien. And then this doesn't have a project, but it's just this lovely mini set from Over the Moon Yarn. And she dies over in Canada. I have this group by Gideon Yarns. This is Elephant Colorway. I have two balls of that. And this one by Eve Chamber Textiles, the um, mohair. And this was something I was going to do something completely different, but then I robbed some of the yarn. So I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe knit this up into 
some sort of lovely shawl and probably sell that at Irish Fiber Crafters because those are really not my colors like that, although they're beautiful. This I would like to put together for the Fox Whisperer sort of shawl slash cape by the Autumn Acorn. I know she uses um, the Newton in, in it, but I'm wondering, can I substitute this because it just seems so foxy. Then this little Arctic Crafts set is going to be a shawl for my niece. Lovely Gideon sock yarns for Christmas that I got. Smiling's my favorite is what it's called, so that's going to be definitely Christmas. This set, the yarn from Gideon Yarns and the fiber I dyed with a little bit of oak just to warm up the, the white, is going to be the Van Gogh shawl. This is the ice cream hat from Over the Moon Yarn. You should definitely go look that up. Sorry about the crinkling. It's really, really cute. It looks like a big ice cream cone. <laughs> My little 50 gram of cashmere, I think I'm actually going to knit up the new pattern by Brogan of Woolly Witchcraft, the bear, little, um, the bear uh, grain um, kerchief headscarf. And I've decided to, with the Cushendale butter colorway here that I've got, this is a lovely Irish wool, nice and rustic. I'm going to do the Humblebee shawl by Lerka of Fiber Tales. Yes. And then I have my Christmas minis from Gideon Yarns gathered there and some mohair ones as well because I'm going to make something with them. So they're together. My Arctic Crafts purples, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. This group of the Gideon Yarn minis, again, I had a plan but I forgot. <laughs> no. um, I'll come back that way. So again, so the, all these minis are assorted. A lot of them were from the Felt Fusion Christmas Advent. I was going to do the Rainbow Sock Chronicles with them, but I love them so much. I'm actually not. I want to make something big with them. Maybe, you know, a, a, a long sleeve jumper or something. So we, I think we looked at all those. These are my hand dyes with daffodil dandelions. And this one was dyed with ivy berries. And this one was the bramble roots. And that's two-tone and a couple of these are two-tone. I have no idea what I'll do with these. This is a lovely uh, yarn from uh, Grace Babbles Yarns. And then two more for Wild Atlantic yarns. And they look really nice together, but yet, as of yet, I haven't decided what might be done with it. This is the bit that I got at, you know, my ranunculus shawl from. I have some left over, so I'm going to extend it. And then I have another skein left. So these were kind of traveling over into skeins. I won't go into each one. That don't have a plan yet. Um, some of them might be like head kerchiefs sort of like the bear but plain because I do like to put my hair back and some cows but yeah I've got a lot of these beautiful items I just couldn't when I was in the shop after I had my tooth pulled I was like I just love those colors so that's left over from my unicorn sweet shawl beautiful set naturally dyed greens from Shunnock yarns some greens from Eve Chamber textiles Another lovely one from Over the Moon, and then this beauty from Corcra, and some more from Cushendale. And I was going to combine that with the butter colorway and make the pressed flower shawl by Amy Christoffers, but I, I robbed that for the humble bee. So, yeah. I bought these yarns separately for two different projects that I decided I no longer want to do because these are so fine. They're such a fine fingering, and it'll make me bonkers to try to knit up all those little stitches. So I'm probably gonna hold those together in some sort of way. This one is a DK, so this is something for me to play with. These are some Debbie Bliss Rialtos. I'm not sure, they don't have a plan. Over here is just yarn barf <laughs> in general. But yeah, there's a few yarn barf things. That's left over from my Brock cardigan. These are some lovely purples from Fairy Realm Yarns, um, which I no longer have a plan for, but a, a jumper might be nice. I could probably get a short sleeve one out of that. 
and then a, the same for the Arctic crafts. Again, I no longer have a plan, but they're a beautiful set. I mean, they could always be a shawl, but I'm going to have shawls coming out of my ears if I'm not careful. So yeah, and then I just have a few scattered minis there that kind of didn't really group together. I'd use some of them and different things and all. So this is it. This is the yarn accumulation of about, I suppose, three years. I started getting yarn even before I could knit because I knew I wanted to knit. As a spinner, I was surrounded by yarns in a... Uh, Irish Fiber Crafter because I was up there all the time helping out. So that's how I started accumulating these hand dyed yarns. And like I said, we don't have just like a inexpensive large uh, yarn shop anywhere near us. So I just kind of bought here and there. So I love it because I love color. <laughs> so many people are overwhelmed. Anyway, if you kind of see something here and you go, oh, I have the perfect project for that, I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear. And I'd love to hear, let me turn this around. How many of you are bright color lovers? Because watching podcasts, I feel like I'm in the minority. Like, I know a few of you love the bright colors as well. Like, I, um, oh, brain fart. Not, not quite enough yarn. Why? Well, I can see her and why can't I think of her name? Anyways, she loves the bright colors. I think I just started watching Ruth Loves to Knit. She loves the bright colors. Um, yeah, but there's only two I can think of off the top of my head. I know there are others. But yeah, so I'm just curious. So let, uh, yeah, I would like to hear that from the comments. Maybe I'll make like a little poll on Instagram if I can figure it out. But anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this little look at yarns. <laughs> Most of us are here because we love yarns and um, thought it could possibly be fun for you. And you may be shocked about all the colors. <laughs> okay, friends, have a lovely week. I've lied. I forgot to show you these yarns because I already kind of organized them in here. These are all Irish yarns. They are mostly uh, Studio Donegal. Some of them have projects, some of them don't anymore. Like those in the back are going to be for the Share a Cup Mitts by Carrie of My Wool Mitten. And these are actually looking a bit, compared to the other ones which were blown out, these are looking a bit duller than they would, they would be. But I have mohair from Cushendale and it's a boucle mohair. It's different. So it's really cool. And this, I'm sure, is spun up in Donegal as well, I think. It looks like Donegal tweed. So I got that at the little yarn shop that I was talking about. And I got these all in Donegal last year for my birthday. We went up, me and Sandra and Karen, from Irish Fiber Crafters. And then I have Svartblas, Susanna's alpaca, and her Svartblas sheep wool. And different hand spuns of Jacob of my own. These are some of my very first yarns that I made. I love them. Yeah, such good memories. Okay, guys. So anyways, that, that is it. That now that actually is all my yarn. Uh, and I'm just trying to, I organized it in here because it's probably actually about 50, 50 of buying yarns. Cause wow, they're so gorgeous. And then buying yarns oh, for right. projects. So I've kind of gone through and, uh, put together some new project yarn. So I thought I'd show you. So this is sort of like future plans, future maker plans. So and I'm not sure what to do first uh, in the order of things. So I thought maybe I would ask you guys and let you tell me what do you think I should make next. I'll show you some of the options. Okay. So first off, I just open this up a little bit. I know that I really want to do the Sherbet Fizz. Sh that's hard to say. The Sherbet Fizz fizz shawl the sherbert fizz shawl from amber o'brien and that's a new shawl pattern and it is so beautiful it's got a just a lot of lovely texture lace and all on it um yeah so and the thing that's wonderful about this pattern is you can make it in your differing you can make it either it's uh lightweight you can either make it in your fingering or your dk so 
uh, as I spoke about, I think on podcast 10 or one of them, I'm really kind of over it in regards to fingering weight yarns. Um, I'm enjoying knitting with DK much more. So when this pattern came out, I was like, I really want to do it. This lovely uh, alpaca, 100% alpaca, and it's called Sublime. Uh, it's a super fine alpaca DK, and I believe it's by Sirdar. And it's 50 grams, and I cannot find in, on, in here anywhere the actual yardage. So I'm just assuming it's like a typical DK over here where it's going to be a 50 gram ball. This is going to be about 100 meters. And the, uh, for the DK weight of the Sherbet Fizz shawl, I believe it takes 350 meters. So anyways, I got three balls of that because what I think I'm going to do, I had some of this Galaxy left over from my Unicorn Sweets shawl. And this is a blend of um, acrylic and wool and the little sparkles. And I had talked about how during the pandemic in one of our local news agents, they had a small yarn selection in the height of lockdown, news agents were allowed to still be open. And I went in there one day and I saw this and I was like, oh, <laughs> yarn, I need it. And it was sparkling and happy. So in the Sherbet Fizz shawl, and I'll put a picture here, hopefully, you'll see there's one section where it looks like it's maybe just garter. It's simple. And I think in that part, I'm going to use this lighter color and use the alpaca for the main body of the shawl and a little bit there in the middle of this lighter. That's going to be project one, the Sherbet Fizz shawl. So that's one choice. Another choice is, is my beautiful, beautiful Cushendale yarns. Um, so this is an, a lovely traditional Irish woolen mill up in County Kilkenny and Greg Namana. They spend their main yarns with a whole lot of the Galway breed sheep, so Irish wool. And um, that mill has been, there has been a mill there for 800 years, not continuously, but there has been a mill there. So and it's a very small mill. They have some, some lovely old equipment. And anyway, so they spin some lovely yarn. And this is their butter colorway. I want to make, and I bought the pattern as well, um, the Humblebee shawl by Lerka of Fiber Tales. So You've probably seen a lot of podcasters are making that. And I, when she announced it, I was like, I really love that. So I've decided to go ahead and make it and use this wool, this lovely kind of yellow wool. It's a rustic wool and it's, it's heathery in that there's sort of little, you know, different shades of the yellow. And I'm getting a lovely skein of the mohair colorway called Queen of Bees from November Woods Fiber Podcast, Fiber Company, Alexandra, and she's over in the U.S., and we're actually doing a swap, so I'm sending her some Irish farm yarns that we had at Irish Fiber Crafters, and I'm sending her some easy-to-spin uh, breeds of wool fiber because she's got a new spinning wheel and she's going to start spinning. So we're doing a swap and she's going to send me a skein of that queen of bees. So I'm really excited about that. So I was thinking for when I actually get it in my hands, because you know, things on the internet, sometimes when you have the color in your hand, it's a bit different. And this is really um, like a warmer yellow um, and a more muted sort of yellow versus some of my dandelion and daffodil dyed yellow. So I'll show you that in a minute. So if it matches nicely with this, what I might do for the part of the humble, humble bee, humble bee shawl that doesn't have the bees on it, I might hold that part, this double with the queen of bees, which I think would be really cool if I think the colors play nice together. So that is another project. Um, so that will be done, but I'm just waiting for the yarn so to that's come. that's another project. Then the next project that I was thinking about doing on my radar. So this is another new pattern, the Circle Cardigan by Albina of LB Hand Knits. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's quite exciting. It's a different sort of construction. Apparently it's knitted very like a circular shawl, which I've never knit a circular shawl but it looks really cozy. And again, it's a fantastic pattern in that she gives you the options for 
using a fingering weight yarn, a sport weight yarn, or the DK. So I have a lot of this really lovely colorway from Fairy Realm Yarns, and it's called Bunch of Grapes. And I have four skeins of that, and I had wanted to make like some sort of jumper out of it. And I'd already wound one of the balls up. That's what it looks like. Blowing out a little bit because I'm in the house and the light isn't quite true. But this is enough to make one of those cardigans. And again, so I'll be hopefully I'm popping up some photos of the pattern here. So that's another option, um, which I'm excited about as well. So that could be something I knit soon. The other option of what I might knit soon is option four. And this is, so the other half of my Cushendale Woolen Mills wool, and this colorway is called C. And it's a DK, so it's 200 meters in the um, 100 grams. And again, it's turning out a bit more, a little bit more on the blue tip of things than what it is. It's more on the teal green. But what I was thinking could be really, really fun is to hold it double. So for the first part, I was thinking I'd hold it double with this lovely DK from Corkra Yarns. And again, she's an Irish indie dyer. I love her yarns. And look, she's put a beautiful little dolphin stitch marker on there. So these are, it's a lovely blend of cool colors. And so I was thinking holding this double, hold for the first part in the middle. And so I'm thinking of a shawl in the middle, holding this, just the, the Cushendale color C with itself, double with itself. And at the end, holding this double with this lovely colorway called Rhubarb from Babel's Yarn. And again, it's a DK, it's on her delicious DK base. And it's about 200 meters. And this is 75% uh, New Zealand virgin wool. It's a super wash and 25% nylon. And this one from Corkra is, I can't remember because it's not actually on here. It's on the piece of paper I got with it, but I think it's a Merino. Um, I can't actually remember, but it's a DK. Now you will probably might be able to note that this is very much warmer tones, but this color here, especially with the little heathered bits in it, subtly heathered, I think is a really good bridge between these sort of cooler and warmer colors. So I'm, especially when I hold it double. So I'm thinking that might be really kind of exciting to do. Now, if I just, if I hold it double, it'll be, and leave out the middle part. Uh, what should I, do you think I should leave out the middle part? I mean, will that make too much of a, just an old stripe in the middle? I'm not certain that would, you know, then I would have a 400 meter shawl. That's fine. If I put that in, then it would be a 500 meter shawl. Is that right? 200. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, so I'm kind of thinking actually maybe to not have the solid in the middle would be nicer. I mean, I can always try it. And if I don't like it, I can rip that part back before I start on the next, you know, actually I think, yeah, I think I, I won't put in the middle. I think I've already decided that, but let me know your thoughts. So, and that's sort of my fourth project that I'm thinking of. And then my fifth project, and this is not going to start until September because I'm going to do this as part of a knit along. The Frivolous and Frugal pro blah, 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 blah. The Frivolous and Frugal podcast is going to do, they do a lot of knit alongs. So if you enjoy knit alongs, do um, check them out too. Uh, they're going to start a curvette shawl and that's a Stephen West pattern, paid for pattern. And they're going to start that knit along on the 1st of September. So I'm going to do that with, I don't want to pull all this out, but I'll pull a little bit of it out. The finely fiber set that I showed you and I managed to get the very perfect yarn. Curvette shawl. Um, you have your sort of main yarns and then you have a mohair that you knit by itself in sort of these little, it looks like little eyelets. I haven't bought the pattern yet, so I'm not certain, 
but I just at had the a end look. of my at the end of looking at all the shelves, there was a little tiny section of sort of just bits and bobs of yarn, and there was this Juniper Moons Farm Findlay. And it's a lace weight and it's a um, extra fine merino and mulberry silk. So it's really nice. And I'm I'm thrilled because this is a lovely soft merino as well. And so I'm going to use this instead of the mohair. And it's it, I mean, I really could not ask for a better, a, a more perfect match of the color. So I'm super duper excited to be knitting with these for the curvette shawl on the knit along. Another plan that I, I wanted to mention is that, you know, with the beautiful Ash, Afghan um, hand spun cashmere from the Afghan women that, that they're carrying at Irish Fiber Crafters, I was thinking that I would make the, um, the bear um, kerchief, head kerchief that um, Wooly Brogan of Wooly Witchcraft, it's her first pattern. It's not quite out yet. It's gone to testers, but, and she's knit it out of a cashmere, a Rowan cashmere. And I was thinking, oh, I have a little bit, this nice hand spun cashmere. I'd like to um, knit that pattern out of this. So yeah, so that's another project that it's going to be on my radar. And that should be, you know, it's only small, so be fairly quick pattern or very quick knit. So that's another thing I want to do as soon as a as soon as that pattern comes out. So, yeah. So do check her podcast out. You probably have already heard of it. If you haven't, go check her out. She's over in Glasgow, which is one of my favorite cities. I lived there for a little while and I absolutely fell in love with it. Part of my family is uh, from Glasgow. And so, yeah. Oh, I love Glasgow. Anyways, I won't go into how much I love Glasgow. So, <laughs> I love your tips on any of those things. I'd also love to hear what you'd like to see me knit next. That was a little look at some maker plans and um, I'll show you finished objects and all that sort of thing coming up.